Let's try to understand how to find inverse of quadratic function with restricted domain, right? So here we have an example. It says determine inverse of f of x equals to x squared plus 5, where x is less than equal to 0, right? To give you an idea how this function looks like and how should its inverse be. So let's try to sketch the function. So x squared plus 5, that means x squared is a normal curve parabola like this and it's move 5 units up. So we can make a parabola like this, right? So that could be x squared plus 5, right? Now when we say x is less than equal to 0, that means we are considering this half of the function, right? So we are considering, so our domain at present is towards the left of this. This is x less than equal to 0, right? So when we try to find inverse of this function, then at that time what we are trying to do actually is find inverse of only this function, that part of it, right? Which will be kind of like this. We can, I'm just approximately doing all this. Now we have a line y equals to x here. And if you reflect this, so this is 0, 5, so its point will be here, which will be 5, 0. And this kind of a function here should be the inverse of that function, correct? So we are looking for that as the inverse of the given function. So now, with all that in mind, let's try to figure out what is the inverse of the given function. So let's follow the procedure, and that is y equals to x squared plus 5. We swap x and y to find inverse. So we write x equals to y squared plus 5. And now, isolate y. So we get x minus 5 equals to y square and then we do square root. So when we do square root we normally do square root with plus and minus. Right? In this case what should it be? Should it be plus minus plus or just minus? That is a huge question to be answered. Right? Now how to answer that question? There are many ways to do it. Do you see this? This gives you a hint. But I will introduce you another idea here, and that is about domain and range. If you see your original function here, what is the domain? Domain is restricted. Here, domain of the function f of x is x is less than or equal to 0. And range is y greater than or equal to 5. Do you see that? Now when we do reverse or when we do inverse of this function, that is now we are considering inverse of this function, right? That means f of inverse x. Now what should be the domain and range for that? It has to swap, right? So x should be greater than or equal to 5. Do you see that? x, it will swap, right? And range should be what? Range should be less than or equal to 0, right? So y should be less than or equal to 0. Perfect. So that is how the domain and range of your inverse function will be. Correct? So y is less than or equal to 0. Do you see that? Now, since our domain was restricted, here we will not take both plus and minus. We will take only minus. And that will satisfy with this condition also. Do you understand? Therefore, we get here f inverse of x is equals to minus of square root of x plus 5. So that is the inverse of the given function when we have this restriction. Now if you check what do you see? You see the same thing, right? So here, this point is 5, the y-intercept, and so we have an x-intercept of 5 here, and our function is x plus 5. Sorry, this was minus 5. So this was minus 5. That's an error. So we have x minus 5, a square root, that. So at x minus 5. So it is x minus 5. As you can see, here, 
x minus 5. So x has to be greater than 5, greater than equal to. Do you see that? So it satisfies both the conditions. And the point here which I am trying to make is if you get a function whose domain is restricted, then while finding inverse of your function, keep an eye on domain and range, just as we did. And once you write down your answer, check your answer. Is it valid or not? Right? Now here, when we have this function, now you can test it out. Square root should always be greater than or equal to 0. That means x minus 5 should always be greater than or equal to 0. That means x is greater than or equal to 5. And that matches, correct? And here also, it works out fine, right? So this is what is kind of very important. And this step is most important step in these kinds of problems, right? So if we have x only less than or equal to 0, then we have to take negative square roots. If I would have given you x greater than 0, we will take positive square roots. And if I don't give you any condition, it will be both plus and minus. Do you get my point? That is how it should be. Now here is a question for you, practice question, right? And that is, find inverse of y equals to minus square root x minus 5. You have the answer right there. But you need to find it out and then show that, you know, inverse of this is this. So that that be a challenge question for you. Try to do this part. Okay. Thank you.